Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Now, here's Melinda. Well, with me is somebody who is a heartthrob for so many women here in the desert. Oh, He's dear. Back on Talk of the Desert. That's <laughs> Julius LaRosa. Julie, welcome back it's to the to be, desert. It's good and to desert. see you again, by all means. You too. Of course, <clears throat> Pardon me. You know, you were here in the desert over for about a, a year. A year ago, uh, you know, doing that senior class thing. Yes. And, uh, then I, there was a conflict in scheduling, so yeah. I didn't come back this year. Uh, but now I'm here for the Four Boys Four. The, I love that they call us boys. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, I, I, I've been calling you boys because you're in the desert because you performed at the McCallum Theater uh -huh. on March 7th for That's Italian. Yes, indeed. La Rosa, that is an Italian last name, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and you were with Pete Barbuti, Dick Cantino, and Frankie Randall. Exactly. And the show was Fantastic, you know. It, the response was was yeah. excellent. Yes, you know. yeah. there's the food that well, I really like. Well, you see these four out the cockers get up there <laughs> and have fun. That's the That's the important thing. That's right. You exactly. get on the stage. If you're not having fun, it's contagious. The audience doesn't have fun. That's if you right. have fun, the audience have, has that's fun. That's right. Exactly. Well, you are. You call yourself Julie rather than yes. Julius, uh -huh. and you have a story about your. Your, your father introducing you introducing you one time oh, because no. well in the beginning when all things happened with yeah. me uh, you know invariably I was 21 when it started so there's a natural change as you grow mm -hmm. and then after a couple of years it occurred to me that yes I was changing but the people around me were also changing mm -hmm. and I use as a, an example uh, I was always to my parents to my father my son Julie now I get on the Godfrey show and I become quote, a celebrity, <laughs> and he would say to friends who came in, I'd like you to meet my son, Julius. <laughs> <laughs> Did that seem kind of odd, huh? <laughs> well, it's called human nature. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you, you came into people's homes through oh, television, yeah. through radio for years, and but you were always Julie. Well, that's the big difference between the movie star and the television star. The television star was always addressed by his first name. Hi, Perry. Hi, Ed. Hi, Julie. Uh, because you're in their house, and you go for a beer while there's a commercial. You That's come right. Back and here we are again. <laughs> but you had to pay money to see Clark yeah. Gable, yeah. so he was always Mr. Gable. Yeah. You had to pay yeah. money to see Robert Taylor. He was always Mr. T and my favorite act. Who do you who do you think is my favorite actor of all time? Spencer oh. Tracy. Oh, Spencer, really? Spencer oh, fantastic. Tracy. Yes. I used to live on 52nd Street between 51st Street between Second Avenue mm -hmm. and and First Avenue. And I was doing a disc jockey show, this is several years ago. And I would walk to work sometimes, because it was a matter of eight, nine blocks. And I was walking up 51st Street, and I get to 51st and Park, and on that corner is Spencer Tracy. Wow. And I, <laughs> it. I followed him for two blocks just to, just to <laughs> look at him, just to watch him. <laughs> which, which, by the way, reminds yes, uh -huh. me. Uh, you know, when Brando came in and everybody was talking about method acting, mm -hmm. uh, during an interview they asked Spencer Tracy, Mr. Tracy, what's your uh, philosophy, theory about acting? And he answered in three words. He said, know your lines. Oh, good comment. Yeah, I think Isn't, you do need to know your lines. You can't you? act unless you know Absol your lines. Oh, absolutely. That's Otherwise, you're thinking, true. what am I supposed to say? <laughs> yeah. Rather than, what right. am I feeling? <laughs> right, right. Well, no, there's no question he was a tremendous oh. actor, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what was that last movie he made with Katherine Hepburn? You remember the, uh, the black man oh. marrying his daughter? Uh, yeah. And how he had oh, to come to we, terms. Who, 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 guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> yes, yes. How he had to come to terms with something he was born with yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah and that last speech which i think he died like two or three weeks after really yeah i didn't yeah. i didn't recall that yeah, oh, Spencer Tracy. Tr oh just boy. a tremendous actor now you told me something funny before before we went on air i that, did oh, several <laughs> things <laughs> you're just a funny guy but um you talked about your daughter and some nuns oh yeah 
Uh, I was at some <laughs> autograph signing uh, event, and uh, you know, at a desk signing, and people were coming and saying, now these two nuns came by, so I got up to, you know, with the nuns, and one of them said, how's Maria, my daughter? I said, oh, she's fine, she just started at Our Lady of Victory, and sisters, you'll get a kick out of this, uh, uh, after they signed all their ID things, uh, her teacher came by, a, a nun, and looked at it and said, Maria La Rosa, are you related to the singer? And my daughter said, he's my daddy. And the nun told my daughter, you know, Maria, when I was your age, I had your father's picture on the wall of my bedroom. <laughs> oh, I love it. the nun I was telling this to said, I still do. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful story. Oh, isn't You can't that, make that up. No, you can't, you can't make that up. See, nuns are really human beings oh, underneath the, um, the garb, huh? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And a matter of fact, whenever the subject does come up, I'm reminded I didn't go to Catholic school. And so on Wednesday afternoons, we would get off school at two o'clock and walk to St. Joseph's where I would learn the catechism. And mine wasn't a, a very uh, practicing family, so I had to learn all the prayers. And we got to the Hail Mary, full of grace. And blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Sister, yes. What's a womb? <laughs> well, to this day, I remember the look that nun gave me. <laughs> she thought I was being smart. That was just an innocent. See, so your parents didn't tell, uh, tell you about the birds and the bees? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the thing. They always say, he'll, he'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Well, Julie, what, at what age did you realize that you could sing? I, I never did. Uh, uh, it all started really, me and my friend Joey, Joey San Giorgio. We met in kindergarten, went all through elementary school, now we go to the same high school. And then I noticed Joey was getting days off to rehearse, because he was in the senior chorus. So I said, gee, I want those days off too. <laughs> so I volunteered for the senior chorus. <laughs> I and thought it was because there was a cute girl in there, huh? <laughs> well, that's the other thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the senior chorus and I get a crush on Jeanette Campanegro. <laughs> Don't ask me what I had for breakfast, but I'll, I remember Jeanette Campanegro. <laughs> and she was in the All City Chorus, which meant every Saturday she would go to Julia Richmond High School, not Julia Richmond, I forget the name of it, uh, on 84th Street or something in New York, rehearse for the All City Chorus uh, concert every June, whatever. Big chorus, 300 people, 300 kids, the best from all the choruses in the city of New York. And uh, uh, I tried out for the chorus. And the, that was well, funny, my God, I haven't told this in a long time. The man who auditioned me was Mr. C, was all we knew. And just a song at twilight, when the lights are low, and the flickering shadows softly <laughs> come, and God sang the song. And he said, sing this chord. And he hit a chord on the piano, and I went, bop and bop and boop and bop and bop. And he said, young man, you're very good. I, Thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I didn't said, have a clue. How come huh? Miss Brown hasn't sent you to us sooner? And he said, oh, we're not supposed yeah. to do this. Ordinarily, we notify Miss Brown, and she will tell you that you will be in the senior course. But I'm telling you, you are going to be in the senior course. And that was, again, uh, uh, I can't even say that's when I knew I could sing. I just did it because I loved doing it. And then and because I'm of the girl. rehearsing one of the songs <laughs> in the senior chorus, in the uh, All City Chorus, and the conductor was a man named Peter J. Wilhowski, a mad Russian. <laughs> and one of the songs we were doing this for this concert was Begin the Begin. And when you get to the release, I'm with you once more under the stars and down by the shore, and orchestras play even the palms. That's a cello part. And the first bass, the baritones, are the same register mm -hmm. as a cello. We're not getting it right. So Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilhowski, bought baritone by baritone, sing that line. No, 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 he gets to me. And I'm saying, I'm with you once more. No. He says, that's the way to do it. What's your name, young man? I said, Julius LaRosa. He said, oh, one of Miss Brown's boys. Yes, well, that's the way to do it. The rest of you, that's how you should do that thing. And, you know, why? I walked home and I walked Jeanette Campanegra to the subway like I was nine feet tall. <laughs> Did you pay your subway fare, too? <laughs>
<laughs> Probably did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a nickel then. Yeah, really, really. And now what is it, $2? I don't I know, think. something like that, yeah. yeah. Amazing. But do you, how did you get to the Arthur Godfrey show? I was in the Navy, and I was stationed aboard the USS Wright, CBL-49, and we would go, there was a joint in town in Pensacola, Florida, where we were based, called the Town Pump. And me and my buddies would go to the town pump, and there was a piano player, and I would go up and sing a couple of songs. And while I was singing, the owner would give us guys at the table beers for nothing, because while I was singing, the people would stay. So we were getting free beers. So now we made it a habit <laughs> to go to the town pump. I'll sing a couple of songs, we'll get our free right, beers. Right, exactly. <laughs> this is September of 1950. <coughs> Pardon me, 50, yeah. And Arthur I thought Godfrey, you were trying to cover up the year with that cough. No, no, you know, no, 1950. That okay. <laughs> and Arthur Godfrey comes down to Pensacola, Florida. He was a big Navy backer, and he was a gifted pilot, and, uh, a, a, a licensed pilot, so mm -hmm. to speak, and he wanted to get the coveted Navy Gold Wings show with the pilot. And in order to qualify, you have to land on an aircraft carrier six times and take off from an aircraft carrier six times. So while he was in uh, uh, Pensacola, one of my buddies, and to this day I never, which one, snuck into BOQ, Bachelor Officers Quarters, and put a note, why don't you come to the Enlisted Men's Club and listen to our friend Julie Lorenzo from Brooklyn sing. I met C the next day and I get a telegram, and I got the telegram somewhere in my collection, uh, be at the Enlisted Men's Club tonight, and Arthur Godfrey will audition you as your shipmates requested. And that's oh, wow. how it started. Wow. And really? then I was told later on, he was taping it. In those days, they called it kinescope. Right. And he was kinescoping this audition. Where's the young man? I got up and sang. One of the songs I sang was, Tear a star from out the sky, and the sky feels blue. Don't take your love from me. Uh, anyway, I finished singing my two songs, and he said, Young man, I think you should know when I, I've been taping this and uh, we're kinescoping, and when I get back home, I'm going to show it on my television shows. And Dummy says, if I give you my mother's phone number, would you call her to make sure she's watching? <laughs> cute, cute. And I was told later on yeah. that that's what made him, uh, what, what, what attracted me to hear him to me was that this was a kid. This was a non-show business kid. This was a, quote, diamond in a rough. Yes. And that was how, it, how come it all started, because mm -hmm. then uh, he gets, uh, goes back and the kinescope doesn't work out. So he calls the Admiral and says, I told America about that kid from Brooklyn, but the film didn't turn out. Can you give him some leave to come up and do the show? So of course, they said, yes. yeah. And I went up to do the show and I rehearsed uh, are the stars out tonight? I don't know if it's... And at the time there was, here's a happy tune, da-da-da-da, they called it Sam song, a duet with Mr. Godfrey. Wednesday night comes, he doesn't put me on the show. So I stomp out of the green room. <laughs> you know, who the hell does he think he is? Ba, 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 ba. And the producer comes after me and says, Julius, what are you doing? I said, my mother was watching and he didn't put me on. Honest, this, you can't make this up. So he starts to laugh and he says, wait a minute, hold, wait here. And he comes back a few minutes later and he says, Arthur's gonna call the base, see if they can give you, extend your time home. We'll put you on the show Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, give you some experience. And then you do the show Wednesday night. And that's exactly what happened. And during those three days, he again, uh, it corroborated his first impressions that I was not a showbiz kid, that I was just a, look me, my holy mackerel. <laughs> yeah. And that's what played, and everybody really? thought I was shy. I wasn't shy, I was scared to death. <laughs> but it showed <laughs> as if he was, I was shy. shy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Amazing. Wow, well, I haven't talked about that in a long time. On your, well, thank you for sharing that on Talk of the <laughs> Desert, Julie. On your website, if you go to juliesarosa.com, yeah. one of the first pictures that pops up, if you go to the uh, biography, is a picture of you in the naval uniform. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, you See are so cute. how thin so I was cute. and all the hair I had? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're still thin. <laughs> I don't no, know about no. the hair, but... Actually, actually, it's very funny. When I joined the Navy, I was 160 pounds, yeah. and now I fluctuate between 175 and 180. Mm -hmm. So over 
60 years mm -hmm. to gain 20 pounds ain't that bad. That's right. <laughs> well, before we went on air, you said that Arthur Godfrey was the father of your career. Oh, yes. That's absolutely the truth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just right. Yes. It, it reminds me, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of sad, but it, it, it's a wonderful example of the old bromide, what goes around, comes around, you know, that kind of thing. Because I was working in New York when he died, when he passed mm -hmm. away. Uh, and so all the newspapers wanted a comment from me. But I'd been hurt a number of times when people would ask me about Arthur Godfrey. And I'd say, hey, he's the father of my career. I'll always be grateful right. to him. But it turned out he wasn't a very nice man. Next day on the papers or on the television news thing, we asked Julius about Arthur, and he said he wasn't a very nice man. But they left mm -hmm. out the part in front. Yes. So I became camera shy. I don't talk to reporters anymore. Uh, so now he dies, mm -hmm. and they want a comment from me, and I, I took off. <laughs> now the owner of the club says, hey, all the people want a comment from you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call a press conference. So I said, OK, you know, I'm working for the guy. He's my boss. But I had a writer friend of mine write a, uh, a statement. I don't know, a 100-word statement father of my career, et cetera, et cetera. And it ended up by saying, in the beginning, while he was still alive, we were free to praise or, or, or uh, 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 when you say, when you, when you criticize, praise or criticize one mm -hmm. another as mm -hmm. we saw fit. Mm -hmm. He is no longer here to answer, so I am no longer here to make a statement about Good it. Good for you. Which was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so they would ask a question, a leading question, and I would say, I think my statement covers that. And yeah. the press got very upset with yeah. me because they wanted something the, uh, yeah. something inflammable. Tabloid you know. type of Bingo. stuff. Bingo. Yeah. Uh, and they never forgave me in New York. Yeah. Never oh, forgave Oh, really? Me. Oh, yeah, because they wanted well, a story. And I didn't give them the story. Well, Julie, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the rest of your career and what's in the future for you. We'll be right back with handsome Julius LaRosa. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch that dial. Melinda and her guests will be right back. Enrich your life and be inspired at the McCallum Theater. At the heart of our community is a unique place that nurtures the creative spirit inside us all. We welcome the best artists and shows with stunning acoustics and luxurious surroundings to our one-of-a-kind, state-of-the-art performing arts center. We hope you'll come experience this unique, world-class venue with us. This is the McCallum Theater. Did you know that the Palm Springs Air Museum has been ranked by CNN Travel to be one of the 14 best air museums in the world? In your own backyard, a world-class treasure awaits. Have you visited the Palm Springs Air Museum lately? Experience the Palm Springs Air Museum for the flight of your lifetime. Creativity, confidence, self-esteem, critical thinking. These are the precious gifts children receive from the arts. It's why the McCallum Theater is devoted to helping children discover their potential. We impact the lives of thousands of kids each year through performances, arts education, and hands-on programs across our community. Join us. Help make an impact here at the McCallum Theater. The talk of the desert. Now, let's go back to Melinda and the second half of the show. Oh, yeah, Julie, I don't like to talk about negative things on Talk of the Desert because I like to be optimistic and positive. Yeah, yeah. But we were talking about um, Arthur Godfrey. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you said you had an, a little well, bit of a yeah, sad Well, it's, it's a sad story, and I almost hesitate to tell it, but nevertheless, it's part of the whole story. Right. Uh, I was working in town when he passed away. I think I mentioned that mm -hmm. earlier. And a couple of nights later, a friend of mine, doctor friend of mine, came in to see the show. I said, Julie, let's have a drink after the show. He came backstage to say hello before the show, dressing room. He said, let's have a drink after the show. I got a story for you. So I do the show, go into the bar with my friend. Have it, and he tells me a friend of his was a doctor at Mount Sinai where the old man was. And his friend, and he heard this dreadful wheezing. Uh, uh, 
from the room, obviously, Arthur Godfrey's in that room. We coughing, and so, so he walked in and introduced himself, Mr. Godfrey, I'm doctor, whatever his name was. Can I get you something? And his answer was very sad. He said, get me some friends. Oh my, oh my. But it's that old what unfortunate you? bromide, what goes around comes around. Exactly. You know? well, that's and in the big book, they say you reap what you sow. That's exactly right. <laughs> I totally agree with that, Julie. Um, let's talk about something that was funny associated with the Arthur Godfrey show because we were speaking about Vincent Valcone who worked with you and Frankie and Dick Cantino and Peep Our Booty at the McCallum Theater. Yes. Also is the music director conductor for Stephen Eady who right. were here at the McCallum for right. oh, several I know where. night run. Yeah. Yes. I'm Tell on us the about, Godfrey show yes. four or five months still in awe of what's <laughs> happening to me. Still can't get over this and kid wins. Uh, talent scouts and uh, as it used to be when you won talent scouts you were on the Godfrey morning radio shows for the rest of the week so this one year for f four or five months after I start on the show and I still don't know what I'm doing this 16 year old kid wins the talent scouts and he gets up on it and sings like a magnificent bird and it was young Steve Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the video clips that they show of their career before the performance uh -huh. of Stephen Eadie's, there is a clip of Steve when he won. When wow, he, when I'd he was love on the that. Arthur Garvey show, and he looks like he's wet behind the ears, 16. still in diapers. He you was know. sixteen. Yeah, but he did. You could tell that there was talent there. Oh know? yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, it's funny. I'm. 76 now and I was five years older than he then so I was 21 and he was 16 and here we are yeah well now we know what ages you both of you are <laughs> <laughs> also during the break you talked about that there was a quote from Betty Davis that you oh yeah to talk about age yeah uh, there are two marvelous quotes and it was one was brought up uh, talking I forget who an old Sicilian expression that getting old is a curse but more cursed are the ones who don't get old. Oh, yeah. That's excellent. called Seichel. That's right. <laughs> That's called smart. Yeah. And Betty Davis used to say, Getting old ain't for sissies. No, that's right. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But you had you, you, oh, also, yeah, well, you got to meet Betty, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, remember the old show, television show, Hollywood Palace? Of course. So I was a guest on it twice. Once Joan Crawford was the hostess, and once Betty Davis was the hostess. And unfortunately, Joan Crawford turned out to be somewhat of a snob, you know. <laughs> oh. uh, God rest her soul, yeah. nevertheless. And Betty Davis, God rest her soul, was just, you know how you have a production meeting before the show? Mm -hmm. uh, and at the production meeting, I'm kind of, you know, I'm going to meet Betty Davis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I walk in, Betty Davis gets up and says, how do you do, Mr. La Rosa? It's a pleasure to meet you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Betty, Betty, Davis. Betty Davis is saying this to me, the little Julie, right? Amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, exactly. just amazing. You know, what we've never talked about is that your acting career, besides what you did at senior class, uh -huh. you, had a, you had an acting career, oh, yeah, I too. did. Uh, yeah. I made one movie, which one day I'm going to buy every copy, and you'll see a <laughs> big fire. <laughs> Marvelous fire. Oh, uh, made that one movie. Well, you, hey. What, what's the name of the movie? The name of the movie was Let's Rock. Let's rock? Let's rock, okay? <laughs> and what was it about? And Paul Anker was a walk-on. Uh, woman singer, can't think of her name, was a walk-on. My co-star, the romantic interest, was mm -hmm. Phyllis Newman, God bless her. Uh, and it was a you know, low-budget film, by all means, and it was more or less of a screen test. And obviously, I failed the screen. I failed the screen test. <laughs> Is that the only movie you ever did? <laughs> That's all. The only a couple movie. of home movies, which I'm good at. Yeah. Uh, oh, while we're talking about home, just to tell you the daughter, which you were talking about earlier, Maria. Oh yeah. About, what her name is. Okay. Now, well, yes. my daughter was married 14 years ago. My daughter's name was Maria Lucia Teresa La Rosa. <laughs> It's like a beautiful. song, it's like a it's melody. It's beautiful, yeah. And then she was married 14 years ago, and now she's Maria Lucia Teresa La Rosa Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it's it. It's the truth. <laughs> Let's go back to your acting career for just a second. You were also a supporting actor on a soap oh, yeah. opera. Oh yeah, I won a, won a, what do they call it, a nomination for an Emmy or something. Yeah. Uh, best supporting actor, and it was called... Uh, uh, Another World. Another World, which brings to mind one of my favorite stories. Oh. While I was doing Another World, 
Uh, I went to visit a friend of mine who had a, a home in the Catskills, uh, and we were at his pool. And his son, young 10, 11 year old kid, was in the pool with a couple of his buddies. Pass, evening's over, come back home. My friend calls me later on and says, Julie, you're going to get a kick out of this. I said, My son told me after you left that his friend asked him, Is that man talking with your daddy in another world? And I told him, no, he seems like a nice man. What <laughs> 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 a lovely story. Isn't that cute. <laughs> you know, we only have a couple minutes left of this half hour, Julie. Yeah. But we've never even talked about with the first interview I did with you. We've never talked about your radio career in New York because you. Well, were I was a disc jockey for, for w &E eight w. years, and I loved doing it. And it was a successful show yeah. primarily because I was coming from inside, and I would say, "Listen to the saxophone solo after he finishes that," and I. I would say, listen to this. I would uh, specify various aspects of the song, of the singer, uh, and I used to have uh, 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 pet, what's the word I'm thinking for? Uh, there's a word I would call Barbara, Sinatra, Lena. I, I used a word to describe them, and I can't think of it at the that's, called senior moment right that, now. That's right. It's a public senior <laughs> it's moment. Public, is what that's I'm that happens. I call them junior <laughs> moments. But <laughs> yes, but, now what the heck was it? I could. Yeah, but you brought, you were able to bring something to. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, being a disc jockey yeah. that I, other people wouldn't because of knowing the music and, and knowing, knowing the what I was. And musicians used yes. to love to listen to oh, me because sure. they'd also catch me in an error from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh sure. Oh, I would say I, I think that's it. E flat and the. Uh, more on its F, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Julie, I'm so glad to have you back in the it's desert. It's a pleasure. Even though you're a New Yorker, I feel like you belong here uh, in Palm Springs a whole lot. Yeah, well, oh, when I come here, I feel very much at home. And in the next 20 seconds, tell them what's coming up here in uh, in the next month or so. In the next month? Of, oh, no, well, that has been uh, the guy who is going to do it uh, uh, oh. has... Uh, He's going into the hospital. It's well, been it's been no, delayed till next year. I was talking about your fiftieth wedding anniversary. Oh no! Well, yeah. Well, that's next month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah April seventh. So, yeah. So congratulations. Years. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, I'd like been to married fifty years. Five have been happy. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're terrible. <laughs> no, you're wonderful, actually, Julius. I'd like to thank Julius and Rosa again for being my special my guest on Talk of the Desert. You're easy Come, to talk to. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're easy to talk to. <laughs> Come back to the desert more often, will I promise. you? Okay. Thanks, Julie. Bye-bye. <laughs> and thank you, audience, for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web. Springs Air Museum has been ranked by CNN Travel to be one of the 14 best air museums in the world. In your own backyard, a world-class treasure awaits. Have you visited the Palm Springs Air Museum lately? Experience the Palm Springs Air Museum for the flight of your lifetime.